Hi, welcome to the Quantity Serving Studio, a digital platform for all quantity serving professionals. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe for more quantity serving related videos. Now we'll look into how ducts can be measured in terms of area. So for that, we need to understand some formulas. So these are the formulas. So I'll be explaining these formulas by using the AutoCAD drawing and also a physical drawing of each duct fittings. So first we'll see the formula for the area of a straight piece of duct. So that is 2 into W plus H into L. W is width, H is height and L is length. So if you see this is a straight piece, so W is this length, H is this length and L is the length measured. In an AutoCAD drawing if you see the size will be given, size for each duct will be given in your drawings. So you Usually the first number that is mentioned will be the width and the second part will be the height. So in this drawing, in this rectangular piece of duct, straight piece of duct, 450 is the width, 300 is the height and then L you need to measure. So once you have all these, you can calculate the area of a straight duct. Now next is elbow. The formula for area for an elbow is 2 into W1 plus H1 into L1 plus 2 into W2 plus H2 into L2. Now W1, H1 and L1 are the length of one part of the elbow and W2, H2 and L2 are the dimensions of the second part of the elbow. So if you see here, one duct will be connected to this part and it will be as per the design and route of the project. We can understand what is the width and height of each part. So W1 and H1 will be the width and height of the duct that is connected to this part and L1 will be the length till the center of this elbow. W2 is this part, H2 will be this height and the length will be the length of this part till the midpoint of the elbow. So if you see your AutoCAD drawing, see. So here duct of 400 into 300 is connected to the elbow piece and it is connected to a duct of 300 into 200. So your W1 and H1 will be 400 and 300. L1 will be this part and W2, H2 will be, W2 will be 300, H2 will be 200 and L2 will be the length of this part. Now we'll see the formula for offset. So for offset, it is 2 into W plus H into L1 plus L2. So if you see here, in an offset, a same piece of duct is connected and due to the design or the route, it will be an offset is used so that there might be some other services going through this part. So that is why uh, offset is mainly used. So the duct piece connected here and here will be the same. So W and H will be the width and height of that duct piece and L1 and L2 will be L1 will be the horizontal length from this part till here and L2 will be the vertical length from here till here. If you see the AutoCAD diagram, so W and H will be 450 and 200. L1 will be this part, this length measured and L2 will be the vertical length measured. The next piece is reducer. The formula is 2 into W1 plus H1 into L minus W1 plus H1 minus W2 plus H2 into L. So reducer is usually used to reduce a bigger size of duct to a smaller size of duct. So W1 and H1 will be the width and height of the bigger duct and W W2 and H2 will be the width and height of the smaller size of duct and L will be the length of the reducer part. So for if you see for example in this part W1 will be this width because this is the bigger part of the duct, uh, high, bigger size duct will be connected to this side. So W1 is this, H1 will be this height, W2 will be the width of this part and H2 will be the height of this smaller duct and L will be the length of this part. So if you see the AutoCAD diagram, the 415 to 200 is a bigger size and 300 into 200 is a smaller size. So W1, H1 will be 450 to 200 and W2, H2 will be 300 and 200 and the length will be the length measured of for this part. Next we'll see the area of a transition. The transition is used to connect a rectangular duct to a circular or oval shaped duct. The formula is 2 into W plus H into L minus W plus H minus phi R into L. W and H will be the width and height of the rectangular duct and R will be the radius of the circular or oval shaped duct and L will be this length. So if you see the AutoCAD diagram, the W is 450 and H is 200, length is measured here and the R is will be the radius of this oval or circular type of duct which is connected to this transition. So here 200 is the diameter given. So R will be half of 200, 100 mm. Last piece is T and the formula is 2 into W1 plus H1 into L1 plus 2 into W2 plus H2 
into L2 plus 2 into W3 H3 into W3 plus H3 into L3. So it will be there are three ducts connected to a T fitting. So W1 H1 will be width and height of this one piece. L will be this length. W2 H2 will be W2 of this width and height of this part and length is still here from here here to here. W3 will be this width height will be this height and L3 will be from here to here. See the AutoCAD diagram. The W1 will be 450, H1 will be 200, L1 will be the this length till here to this part. W2 will be 250, W H2 will be 200 and L2 will be this part, this length till here. W3 will be 300 and w H3 will be 250 and L3 will be the length of this part. So once you have all the lengths, you can calculate and record it into your Excel sheet. So here you can, this part is the rectangular part and this is for fitting. So fitting area is calculated separately. It is always better to calculate it separately. The rectangular pieces can be calculated separately. If you know the width and height of each rectangular piece of duct, you calculate the length as I have explained previously. Then you put the formula. Since this is for the rectangular pieces, it will be 2 into width plus height into length. So then you will get each part area. You can add a 10 percentage or 5 to 10 percentage extra as per waste stages then you'll get a total again the fittings you can separately calculate using the different formulas that i've explained so then you'll get the total area of the fittings alone then that plus the duct rectangular part will be your total area then if it is required that the fittings needs to be counted separately so this fittings area need not be needed only you can calculate the area of the rectangular pieces then the fittings just needs to be counted separately so hope you've understood how to calculate the duct in terms of area wise thanks a lot for watching this video hope you have gained some knowledge and it will be useful for you in your professional life keep learning stay safe bye